people are standing up. Andor episode nine. Um, I'm in a hotel room, so excuse the dramatic lighting, but hey, I kind of like it. It's um, it's a whole new vibe. Anyway, Deirdre. I'm actually going to talk about Deirdre today because I find her extremely scary. She's one of the most terrifying women I have witnessed on the screen. Obviously the lighting helps as, as, as we noticed, but especially in the scene when she's interviewing Bix, the way the lighting sort of frames her and the way she interrogates Bix and intimidates her and scares her and threatens her. It's, it's very chilly to, to watch and not many women can do that. So, um, well done, the Deirdre, or the actress who plays Deirdre, whose name I don't remember. Da, 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 da. Denise Go. Denise Go. So three features that I've noticed that really make her super scary is the fact she doesn't blink. Like she does not blink. She really maintains this, this strong eye contact. She's pale. I don't know why paleness helps the character become so scary and terrifying, but I suppose that's what vampires taught us. And the third one is her dead look. And I don't mean the, the stare, the, the not blinking, the eye contact, but it's just this expressionless resting bitch face that is just on her face in every single scene. I never really paid attention to her on that level, but I suppose it was quite smart for this episode to start with the torture practice um, <laughs> with Dr. Gorst. I think he's a returning character. I tried to find something about it, but I think he's one of the doctors from Solo movie and obviously no one wants to remember Solo, but I swear we had a similar doctor who was quite malicious and crazy and don't quote me on that, I might be wrong. The torture itself, not so nice, but the sequence pretty good. Going back to Narkina 5, this episode was very, um, it, it was almost potent. The fact that you could actually really feel and believe in every single character that's there. Their struggle, their pain, their, them losing their mind, frankly. And even though it's, again, we're watching a, you know, a fantasy, pure fantasy. It's Star Wars after all. It does give you this very realistic, very tangible effect and yeah actors performance again cherry on top so great casting once again but yeah <laughs> it's not it's not cheery it's not just lightsabers and blasters it's um star wars is not afraid to touch some very sensitive and gory subjects so one of the big revelations Vel is actually mon's cousin so the whole discussion at the dinner table between mon's husband and Vel, this kind of back and forth and Mon just smirking, you know. It, it was a really nice back and forth and at the same time it really hinted to a lot of um, secrets that they two have and a lot of things that Mon knows about Vel and stuff and it, it was it was really nicely done. Like really enjoy that sequence. So one of the highlights to me was um, Vel telling Mon about hey we decided to make something out of our lives and really fight for what's right and makes you realize even further how much they sacrifice and how much they are willing to put in order to save the galaxy and yeah really really nice scene we had Edie and Cyril back together it was a nice little back and forth and Cyril yeah, he's he's delusional. He's deranged at the stage. He really wants to clear his name at whatever cost, even though Deidre, she made it clear she doesn't want to have anything to do with him. She doesn't want to, any help. However, he ambushes her. He's trying to plot with her, but she she's just not having it. And yeah, I am not sure what Cyril's going to do, but you know, when you look at someone then you can just see craziness and madness in their eyes. That's what Cyril looks like. And um, yeah, obviously great characterization, great acting. It's it's a great performance. Um, the next time I'll see Cyril, I'll be very, very stressed, <laughs> very unsure of what he's going to do because God, he's like vibrating. He's so intense. So back to Narkina 5, we follow Andor, which 
as we figured, he's plotting the escape the entire time. He's really trying to figure out what the system is, how many, you know, officers are there per level. And he's really trying to recruit people. And I mean, people actually want, they want in anyway. Apart from Andy Serkis's character, who's um, Kino, his name is Kino, who is strongly against it. So apart from Olaf, he was like the second to, to leave the prison and he just wants to, you know, keep his head down, do what he's told. And he really hopes that he's going to be let out. But what happens is the news reached them that, hey, the, <laughs> there was a guy who was released and then um, put back straight to prison, to level two, where obviously he spread the word and he told everyone about the injustice on the level and 100 people were killed by the empire and the news traveled all the way up and let's just say uh, Andy Serkis is, uh, is a lot more willing to help and I mean it took that and also unfortunately Olaf's death is going to be really cool breakout from the prison scene. Um, I'm really, really excited already for that. I'm not sure it's gonna be prison break level. Do you remember that TV series? I, I was a huge fan of that. But hey, I think it's gonna be quite elaborate because it's very restricted. It's very um, intense. And like the whole episode, the, the intensity just continues from, from the pre previous episode. Yeah, some of the highlights this week and the past few weeks, editing, music, casting, script. It, it, this show just keeps delivering. Every episode, I'm just going into Andrew with complete ease, knowing that they're going to serve. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments, what did you think about episode nine? And yeah, I'm already looking forward to the next one. And May the forest be with you. There will be no rules going forward.